Hey everyone! Before we begin today's episode, I would like to remind you guys again to please check out some of my other YouTube channels in the description down below. I have a Star Wars Battlefront 2 Classic Focus channel where I review custom maps and mods on the Battlefront Max channel. I do gaming reviews on the Kanoa Reviews channel, and I've also recently started a Minecraft Adventure channel where I play through classic adventures with friends. You can find the links in the description, and please subscribe to those channels if you like what you see. The year was 2022, and China had expanded its power immensely. Due to its no parlay stance and harsh answer to the Hong Kong protests, it gained much appeal by countries like Vietnam and North Korea, that in response joined the Shanghai Pact. The powerful government of China became even more strict and saw opportunity in a surge of influence that was easy to grasp. Over the last years, China had engaged several programs to boost the nation's economy, fuel and resources, but also fighting power. With other countries now joining freely, this could mean new opportunities would present itself. The cost of that, though, would be that China was going to showcase a lot more aggression, which could spiral things into utter chaos. With North Korea, now also in the same seat as China, it had countries like South Korea and Japan even more worried. North Korea would never dare to unleash an attack on its southern neighbor since the escalation of that conflict was too big for them to handle. Their weapons and armor were simply too few and old. But with China backing them up, that was a whole different story. The developments with China had everyone talking, and word spread around that the nation would also try to influence nations within Europe. As a response, Britain strengthened its own security and tried to find out if anyone was rallying up the crowd in supporting China in what they were doing. Countries that did feel a strong influence from China over the next few months were India and Mongolia. Though India had an incredible amount of manpower, their technical advancements were too little to withstand a possible conflict with China. And with India standing on its own, it was looking for a different patron. It found this in the form of Russia as it joined its faction. This meant that the Indian government at least felt a bit more safe, since the conflict would mean war with Russia as well, something that China, at least at this point, would never dare. Mongolia was the other nation that felt the heat of China, as tens of thousands of troops were stationed near the border. No aggressive language was spoken, but the actions seemed enough. Though currently it was not China's intention to seek a conflict with Russia, the truth was that Mongolia stood as a wide gap between the two powerful countries. It would be in China's military interest to at least have Mongolia at their side. But Mongolia did not find help in neighboring Russia, since the Russian government was afraid that something like that would actually spark an engagement, and so in the end, Mongolia joined China, as did the Philippines. Joe Biden in the US was currently in the progress of creating more jobs on the West Coast, a similar display to that of his predecessor. But of course, behind the scenes, they were already making plans and setting up the next steps in response to the expansion of China's influence. With Russia and India creating a natural border, there was the fear of China trying to seek influence in other continents, including Africa and South America. For the moment, South America seemed safe, with many of its nations just focusing on getting better technology and weapons for their armies. Putin, on the other hand, was very tense on the China situation. He had foreseen something like this years ago, when China started to strengthen its army potential. In response, he had many units being sent over to the border with Mongolia, now belonging to China. Fighting in this region would be highly unlikely and disadvantageous, but nevertheless needed to be secured in case a spark would occur. And where Russia focused now its troops on the border region with China, China itself moved millions of troops around its huge nation as it was setting its pieces on the board in preparation of the next move. Western Russia and nearby countries of Eastern Europe were going to accelerate their processing of fuel resources and erect an economy that would be ready for a war if one were to present itself. 
It all depended on where China's greed would halt. These next few weeks were important, since China was running out of options of spreading its influence in Asia, meaning they would indeed look towards other continents, much like the Americans had feared. But then in the second week of July, 2022, something unexpected happened. Turkey suddenly declared war on Greece. Greece had previously dealt with a civil war that was put down quickly due to the American and British help. But this was a conflict that had much more severe consequences. Turkey attacking Greece made it to where the nations of NATO came into play and would aid Greece in fighting off its sudden enemy. Many troops were still stationed in Greece, including countries other than America and Britain, from during the Civil War days. They had every confidence that they would let anyone enter the Greek border. For the first few days, it was a still conflict. Nobody moved except getting closer to the border regions. But then a sudden makeshift move surprised all the NATO forces currently in Greece. Turkey suddenly had Greece as its ally, with a coup that occurred in the capital while all NATO forces were off to the edge of the nation. The coup was accomplished with the help of Turkey and it came to light that for the past months anti-governmental influence had been spreading through the veins of Greece with the help of Turkish intelligence. With the sudden coup and the anti-government supporters revealing themselves, most of the four NATO forces were taken by surprise and captured. This was a huge setback in the conflict and evoked outrage everywhere. And though it was weird that this sudden conflict occurred, if one were to look at nearby nations, there might be something that explained it. Over the past months, America and other Western nations were so convinced that China would exercise its influence over places like South America or Africa that they forgot about the Middle East. Though Turkey officially had not joined China, neighboring nations had, and it was easy to steer and send in agents through the Turkish border to convey certain needs by the Chinese government. In this case, Turkey could be seen as the gateway to Europe for China, that was currently stuck and surrounded by Russian-controlled factions. And so the conflict actually started, and bordering countries were tasked with entering Greece and put a stop to the new government. For the moment, the Western nations were still in the dark about the Chinese influence, and so the motive was very strange to them. They did not understand if Greece wanted to attack other countries or not. But the capturing of the foreign NATO troops was an act of war. All this turmoil in Europe gave China the opportunity to secure Nepal, and thereby getting a step closer to the Indian border, making it easier to invade if it were to come to that. While this was occurring, China was indeed pulling its roots deep into the other continents to gain the upper hand. Finally, China laid out its rule over onto Africa and South America alike. In America, the oil and rubber production was currently at hand to aid in the now labeled Mediterranean War. America would ship more troops over to Europe to hopefully deal with the situation quick and swiftly. In the first three weeks or so, there were several conflicts, of which all led to the defeat of the Greek troops. They had lost almost 500 men. Most of the infantry that were fighting against the Greek troops were coming from nations in Eastern Europe. It was much easier to get to the area from there. Fighting would occur over many different islands, making this possibly a very lengthy and sluggish war. Then in China, riots erupted as well. There were some that labeled it as a civil war, but in truth, it did not feel like it. A few villages and cities at the coast had rioted, with all the bunkers and seawall defenses being made in the area. With the manpower at China's disposal, it would not take long before this mere annoyance would have been dealt with. Then by September, it finally became public that China had people in Turkey dancing as their puppets. With the secret being revealed, it no longer was necessary to hide the fact that Turkey was now part of China's factions as well. This changed everything. For the next few days, NATO troops were ordered to stand down and wait. For China had not entered the conflict yet, but could do so at any minute due to faction obligations. 
Emergency meetings were held everywhere to see if immediate peace treaties or compromises could be set up to deal with the situation before a world war would break out. But then four days later, the news got out that China would aid Turkey in the war, as were a whole bunch of other nations that were now intertwined in the web that China had spun around the globe. The world would burn once again, as now World War III had officially begun.